and welcome to you. I'm Hayley Palmer. It's so good to have you here with me on tonight's show because we have such a special guest for you. Oh yes, it's only Mark Levette, uh, also known as the Beast from The Chase. And here is what happened when I caught up with him. Mark, it is great to have you here on the show. At long last, we have made it happen. Well, thank you for inviting me, Hayley. I'm looking forward to this. Are you really? Well, yeah, I mean, someone who claims they're better than me at, uh, at any kind of subject. It was a question of, I looked down at this short person challenging me to 80s pop music and said, <laughs> challenge accepted. So can I just point this out? What happened was, I saw Mark at the NTA Awards and I said to him, oh, I'm really good at 80s. Maybe we should do like an 80s quiz. But now it's kind of gone into like, oh, I'm an expert, which I didn't actually say the word expert. Oh, yes, she did. I, I think I've had a few drinks and said the word expert. So you're going to see a little quiz today, which could go either way. I'm either going to be a genius or I'm going to walk off the show. So who knows what's going to happen? But what have you been up to? Because last time I spoke to you, you were in Panto. Yes, I just finished Panto, where I, I was flesh briefing Jack and the Beanstalk. I think they missed a trick, because I'm so obviously the giant, but it confused all the school kids. They went, he's the giant. <laughs> Did uh, you find it easy to learn your lines, or...? Yeah, easier than it used to be. It's getting a lot better now. It's a slightly different kind of memory, because normally I sort of vaguely recall things and then focus it in a bit, whereas lines, you've got to get them in a precise order, otherwise you're going to hang your uh, colleagues out to dry because they're waiting for their line. The good news, though, I'm doing the same panto next year, Jack and the Beanstalk at Oldham. Oh, yes, and, he is. Oh, yes, I am. And 95% of it will be the same, so it's going to be a lot oh, easier to learn the lines from my memory. Because you've got a, a sticky memory, haven't yeah. you? That's what it's called. I don't think I have that. No, not many people do. A lot oh. more people have it than they, than they perhaps they realise. It's Like, it, some bits I can remember, but you yeah. can remember things straight away, can't you? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's a gift. Not when everyone's had it. It's good for my job. It's been the problem when they've been looking to find chasers in all parts of the world because you can find people who are really bright, but they need a second or two to think of the answer. Well, if you do I that, like a my, minute or two. Yeah. Well, if you if you need more, you know, if you can't get it right in a second or two, you're dead because you just wasted too much time. Is you know, it that, right that if you want to go on the chase, you've got to answer? 20 questions in two minutes. No, that's my definition of what I think a decent chaser needs oh, to okay, be. Okay. Consistently score 20 rights in two minutes. Because then we, it's an objective test. They see if they think someone's good enough. Hey, oh, we're at the chase in Britain. We'll take anyone. It's more, have you got a funny story to tell about oh. yourself? It doesn't have to be true. Yeah, I shouldn't say that, but we've seen a few people who may have told a few porkies to get on the show, and I always laugh when that happens. Hey. Well, we've had people on. It's a, um, I, there was one person who once won quite a lot of money and he said it was to win money for the junior section of his local sports team. And uh, so when the researchers who picked him said, I bet they must be so proud. And he went, no, nah, actually, I need the money to shack up with my girlfriend because I've just left the wife. And they're, of course, going... What? But you're not under oath on these things. And look, we work in TV. We've got the sob story culture. Everyone mm. knows if you go on X Factor, the similar, you can't just go on and say, I sing a bit. You've got to have your tale, tale of woe as to why you deserve to win. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. And how's your book doing? Because I know you had your book out before Christmas, yeah, didn't you? It's, it's doing OK. I mean... I like the front cover of it. You look quite scary. I, I, the scary thing is, I don't think there was a lot done to it because oh. I, saw the, I saw the original photos and it's... It's all in the lighting and stuff. And yeah. I'm going, blimey, I haven't had cheekbones like that since 1985. I was quite jealous. Yeah, I've got to say, for a moment, I've got better cheekbones than you at the moment. It's, then you've got pretty good ones. I'd say that, I'd say that. But you actually, like, help people to do quizzes, yeah. don't you, in the book? Well, yes, it's, a, it's tips on how to do things. So it's little things like pay attention at the quiz when, the wrong, when you get the wrong answers because you'll remember it for the next time. So many times oh, people... Oh, yeah, that's the bit I don't do. Yeah, is that because you might be having a glass or something in your hand? It might be, Mark. He knows me too well. It's it, which is fine. I do try. Like, I have been to pub quizzes, and I do really try. I feel, feel like I'm good at some things, but not others. But I maybe need to do the things I'm not good at. Oh. Yeah, when I go to a pub quiz these days, most people are really pleased to see me, especially when I say I'm not allowed to win, because the landlord's going, yippee, people will stay and have a drink. Um... Uh, occasionally you've got the odd team gaps out, but they look at it another way. If they beat me, they can dine out on it for months. Oh, you'd literally be telling everyone, wouldn't you? I would, if I win today. 
which is highly unlikely. I like the if there. <laughs> if so anyway, well. when I win, yeah. Yeah. confidence is everything. And I notice she's always been this big, sassy <laughs> lady. And now we're getting close to the moment of truth. Do you know what it is? Like, I feel, I feel like I needed, like, multiple choice questions. And now I haven't got that, so that's why I'm a little bit like, oh, we're Rookies gonna be okay. have multiple choice. Real quizzes have to come up with the answer. Right, OK. Well, anyway, you're going to see this live in action later. You're all on my side at home. <laughs> so we're going to go into your walk-on song. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the automatic with Monster. It works kind of well. It sets the scene. And then when I'm doing all the photos, and there's so many photos with the lovely British public, 95% of them say, I didn't think you'd be that tall. Because you're six foot... Six foot six and a half, but... And your brother's six foot nine, isn't yeah. he? And that's genuine heights, not wrestling heights or acting heights. There's a reason the chase doesn't let me have photos next to most of the male celebrities, because when they all claim to be six foot tall, I kind of put the lie to that theory. It's true, actually, because most people in the business you meet, and they're actually quite small, but yeah. people always... I was, I was told the reason for that. Why? But acting, especially in movies but TV, the bigger the face proportionate to the rest of you, the better it is. Oh. So it if you look at that way, you ideally want a relatively small person with a nice big face. There we go. Didn't know that. And you're in the business. Huh? <laughs> Welcome back. So check out this song and we'll see you on the other side. We have got a quick fire question round for you. Mm -hmm. I just said to him, do you want to know what they are? He went, no. no. It's good. It's the price of being the best or one of the best is you've got to prove it or whatever. It's one of the ways I know if someone's a fraud uh, oh. in the quiz world or a cheat. The expert will want to show how good they are. They'll give you extra information about it. Because basically, we can't help it. We want to show off. The fraud or the cheat will give you the answer and then we'll just go, oh, kind of knew it, and scuttle off to look up more <laughs> details on their phone or whatever. <laughs> We're going to go into the first one. Here we go. Uh, ritual before going on the chase. Gary Newman, cars. Like it. Uh, Favourite subject at school. Uh, I've got to say maths, really, haven't I? Yeah, it'd be awkward if you didn't. Uh, karaoke song. Oh. Don't let me down. Oh, I mean... Uh, <laughs> There's several, several. I mean, oh. as a duet, it's um, leaving on a, a jet plane. I've done with Anne. We didn't like it. Uh, what that. did I? What's a good one for me to do? I'm trying to think. I tried to do Barry White. I've almost got the voice <laughs> ripped off me. We need the to one, see that. The one I'd love, the one I'd love to do, because when I sing it, is um, I, I always want to sing it operatic, and I don't know why. It's "Love Me Like You Do" by Ellie Goldie. Right, okay. It just it just feels natural Doesn't when she it? does love me like you do for a male voice in like a I could just imagine a Bryn Turville or a Russell Watson, just a big, powerful, booming overlay. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean I'm sure a musicologist will tell me I'm nuts. That's but your song. Yeah, it'd be my song. Mine's um Chesney Hawks, the one and only. <laughs> Is that at the time? It's oh really must go. <laughs> uh, last text you sent. Last text he sent, I'm outside the front door, let me in. He did, he did. <laughs> let him in. Uh, top three films. Oh, God, that's so many. It's like, what's your favourite children? No, we children? need three. You need three good ones. Uh, I've got to say, I thought Maverick Top Gun's the best I've seen in ten years. It really I was good. I thought that was good, yeah. Uh, one I loved, because I didn't think I was going to, was The Illusionist with Edward Norton and Paul Gia, what's his name? And Rufus Sewell. Anyway, it's a fantastic film. OK, and third one? The third one. I do like a good sci-fi, so... But what would I pick? Probably sure. aliens, plural. Uh, funniest moment on the chase? Ah, Fanny Smeller, obviously. I wasn't on set, but I was backstage <laughs> at the time. Uh, I've had several... I mean, the best one I liked was when they uh, playing an 81-year-old lady called Pearl... I didn't know the answer. She apparently did and said, it's this. And I went, cheers. And so I pressed that. And what she said, it turned out she was talking out of rubbish. So she completely <laughs> dummied me out. <laughs> and one thing that you're excited about in 2023? Hopefully, I'm looking forward to going back to America because it's great fun. They're making yeah. noises about possibly getting my own show out there, which oh. would be really nice. Exclusive. And on that note, uh, we're going to play a little bit of Ellie Golding just for you, so you can oh, sing along you. here on the sofa. Here we go. <laughs> you're the light, you're the night, you're the colour of my... 
Mark, we've got some fun facts about you. Go on, then. And we'd love you to elaborate. Okay. So here we go. Fun fact yeah. number one is uh, you've been on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Countdown and Mastermind. All true. And on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, you won £32,000. Yes. And um, you helped Charlotte Church. Yes. I've, uh, well... Yes, I did. It was about two years ago. I was a phone a friend and Jeremy Clark's been going, is that the beast? <laughs> and he was going, how do you know her? Because he's thinking, is this some kind of white girl? And I said, well, no, I, I used to play on her family's quiz team in Cardiff for several years. So I don't know Charlotte super well, but I've met her several times. And if you're going to go on a show like Millionaire, who are you going to pick as your phone a friend? I mean, if you're going to get a ringer in, you might as well get a good one. Of course. Smart move there. Love that. Fact number two, you have an IQ of 151. Yeah, that's true. Bluff. <laughs> Does that make you borderline genius? Genius is 150, <laughs> so as I say, I'm a very dumb genius. Um, they did it for the Chasers Road trip, and I knew I was doing quite well because the psychology ministry, you could see from a body language, he was getting really excited. I almost did the record for the highest score she's ever seen. If I had Anne's um, verbal reasoning skills, yeah, I would have smashed the record, but that let me down a bit. Turned out I've got three areas of my brain, which is deep into the top 1% of the population. Uh, memory, surprise. Math skills, also a But the other one is neural processing speed, which I think you can see the way I talk and also on the show how fast I react. Yeah. It's a gift. Yeah. I've basically got the brains of a fighter pilot. I just haven't got the body of one. But you're looking good. You've yeah. done really well recently, haven't you? Yeah, hopefully down to about 20 stone now. It's impressive. What's the top tip? Have a five or six-year-old son Aww. to look after. Yeah. Uh, well, no, the, the one thing I do find is I drink a lot more fluids than right. I ever used to and eat a lot less because it feels... I didn't mean to, but it's gradual. I think I'm just not hungry anymore. You could, if this was being interviewed five, six years ago, every time the cam went off, you'd see me reaching for sweets. That's me. I've always got little Maltesers in my handbag. What? Yeah, one Malteser or a giant big grab bag. <laughs> like a little baby bag. It. <laughs> yeah, that's the difference. Now, a very important fact is that you have a Toby Carberry card and I'm trying to steal it. <laughs> you mean this one? Can you have a look? To Mark's Carberry, it's got on it. And it's been so used, the writing's starting to fade. So the what good folk then? at Toby's have given me that. Aww. I'll take you I out to lunch. I'll take you out to lunch sometime. What more can you want? It's a, I know how to treat a woman right. I mean, the apple pie, have you tried that? Of course. Of course. Uh, they, they invited me and some other of their uh, lucky recipients uh, at the end of last year to. You only had about half a main course, but you could have as many puddings as you liked. And after about four or five, I was like, uh... Four or five, wow. Label okay. gorgeous, so. I'm getting hungry now. So there we go. Honestly, full of facts on this show. Uh, next one, soap operas aren't your strong point. That's absolutely true. It's... I always say Superman needs kryptonite. <laughs> and it's well known I'm not very good at soap operas. And to be fair, it's a vast subject that keeps changing. So you've got to stay constantly up on it. But do you think you could maybe just watch soaps for like a month? Oh, if my job depended on it, I Which could soaps close... Which you watch? Well, uh, my wife used to watch um, uh, EastEnders a lot when, and almost by osmosis, even you're doing something else in the room, you kind of pick up on it. I've met quite a few of the, uh, the cast for EastEnders because we're often in the same studios. Uh, they love coming on the show, but Aww. it's... A, it's um, as I said, if my job depended on it, I could close it in a few weeks. But sometimes it's good to have it as a break because mm. the, if, you, if we won every game, we'd be fired. Like it. Uh, you didn't have to revise for your A-levels. Yeah. Um, Look at my jealous face. Well, I never understood revision because it was mainly in there to start with. That's not fair. Life is fair in different ways. I'm sure every one of your colleagues at school looked at you when you were going off somewhere, nearly six foot tall with a stunning outfit on, and they're like five foot two and a, a bit more squat feet. are going, that ain't fair. Life, you make do with what you I had to really got. try. Like, I don't think it came naturally to me. I had to really, really revise for, like, GCSEs. So what's that like? 
it's, it's really hard work. It's really stressful. Well, I was lucky. I, I, I went to apply to go to Oxford back when you did the entrance exam, which meant you took it in the like November time of the, the, the upper six, so year 13 now. And I was fortunate enough, I did well enough on that to pass, which meant Oxford then made me an offer of one E grade A level because I passed and I'd already got one A level. So that summer was pretty good. I spent it playing cricket, doing athletics. Uh, my dad was, t uh, was do we were doing extension of the kitchen. So me and my brother spent the summer um, hauling uh, chalk and stuff and basically getting rid of all the rubbish and stuff, clearing room, which meant God knows how many wheelbarrow loads of soil and rock. Funnily enough, at the end of that, I put a meter on my shop foot and was not far away from the English championship. So you got oh. big and strong. <laughs> There we go. And also, you're not called the Beast because of the show. You were called yeah. that beforehand. Well, it, it sort of came in my early teaching days, but both me and my bigger brother, Big Phil, all six foot nine of him, were known as the Beast. Name Lebet, it's French for the Beast. There we go. And as I always remind ITV's lawyers, I was known as the Beast 20 years before the chase existed. There we go. Well, we are going to go into... Oh, yes. The first million-dollar... Um, uh, music video, John Landis' final, Michael Jackson thriller, and Vincent Price with possibly his finest performance in a speaking role. Do you know the dance routine to this? You can't pay me enough to do it. <laughs> I'll teach you. Here we go. <laughs> Right, now we have got a little treat for you because Mark is going to question me on 80s music because I did say I was a genius. Um, this could go either way. Wish me luck. OK, so I'll put multiple choice in. You know, this is like training wheels. But go on then. Okay. So number one, under what name did Hilary Lester record a Christmas number one as part of a duet? Was it Rene from Rene and Renato? Right. Was it Andrew from Wham? Or was it one of the cast of Do They Know It's Christmas, Band-Aid? Oh, was it number one? <laughs> or was it number three? What are you going for? So is it Rene, Andrew, or an uncredited cast member of Do They Know It's Christmas, Band-Aid? Number one? It is. Ren it was Rene, Rene and Renato. <laughs> OK, number, number two. Number two, what animal was mentioned in top ten hits by both Duran Duran and Aha? Was it a fox, a wolf or a penguin? I know this one, a wolf. Correct, two. In 1981, the passions were in love with a film star of what nationality? Was it French, Italian or German? Can I phone a friend? Go on, then, who are you going to phone? <laughs> My mum. <laughs> well, you got tired of... French. Italian or German? I'm going to go with German. They were in love with a German film star. Yes! An underrated... High five! I'm too good at this. OK. In what 1984 top five hit is a recent US president mentioned over 30 times. So who is the US president mentioned over 30 times in a 1984 top five hit? Was it Obama, Bush or Trump? This is easy. Go on then. You can't say this is easy and not, not answer it. I think it is. I think it is. My gut instinct is. Obama. And what was the song? You know. What, Obama, 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 <laughs> Obama, 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 Obama. Or alternatively, it could be a song you might have heard of. Nelly the <laughs> Elephant packed her trump and said goodbye to the circus. <laughs> Off she went with a trumpety trump, 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 oh, trump. No. And you wanted cheese. Oh, the no. toy doll's it's, finest moment. It's too much pressure. I was going to say Trump as well. But you didn't. OK, next one. In the 1980s, yeah. there was only one nationality mentioned in the title of a number one song. Was that nationality Japanese, Italian or American? I, I should have got your cameraman here. He knows. And I bet he knows who sung it as well. 
Hang on, say that again. Say so it. W only one nationality, as like British, but it's not, was mentioned in the title of a UK number one in the 1980s. It's Japanese. And the song was? I know the song, I just can't sing it right now. It's definitely Japanese, though. It is Annika with Japanese Boy. So, all told, you got four out of five with quite a bit of assistance from the multiple choice. So, not bad. Do you think there's potential for me to be going on any quizzes soon? You would get on a quiz show in a heartbeat. Be oh, because that'd be so funny. Yeah, and plus, don't forget, TV's a visual medium. You go on well-dressed, you've got a funny story to tell about yourself, you're far more likely to get on than... The, the most common person to apply for a quiz show, I'm afraid, is an introverted, middle-aged uh, man who just goes, I'm good at quiz, put me on. You need personality. You need a funny story about yourself. It's, right. uh, okay. you know, we joke on the that. chase. We generally have the quiet one, the good one, the pretty one of either sex, or, and then the nutter. And that's pretty much how we put our four players together. <laughs> Love You'd it. definitely well, be number four, you see. Got a nutter? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, that. we see some of our contestants, and they've clearly thought about it. They've put on a good outfit, because TV's a visual medium, so and visual, it helps. Yeah, yeah. Someone I know made over a million quid and, uh, from playing quizzes, and her secret was she went to every audition wearing a wonder bra. It worked. There we go. There we go. Well, I am sweating from that quiz, so we're going to go into a song. We're going to go into Madness, Baggy Trousers, which, do you know, no one's ever chosen that song on the show before. Really? If, if, well, I was 15 in 1981, so it was kind of like, that's the song of my age group. The cameraman liked it as well. Woohoo! Here we go. Um... We're coming towards the end of the show, and quite honestly, I haven't recovered from the quiz. I feel like I need a cup of tea and three chocolate digestive biscuits, because the pressure... I actually understand now how you feel on chess, because the, you, like, you know the answer, but you just can't think. Right, well, you mentioned the, the, the biscuit fees, because obviously we're a tea time show on the chase. Yeah. We are, uh, we've got other sponsors, but we always said, wouldn't it be nice if we were sponsored by a biscuit company or a cake company? Because yeah. that would just be the fee. Because we'd be going, oh, yeah, no, another digestive, please. It's a... Caramel digestive. Because it, it's clearly proven your brain thinks much better with a cup of tea and a digestive. Oh, always, especially at five o'clock when the chase is on. Yes. You know, we, we should be sponsored by a biscuit company, and I'm happy to do any adverts they want. There we go. There we go. Uh, but we want to remind everyone to get hold of your book, don't we? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Can you, catch the, can you beat the beast? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I had to remind myself there. <laughs> um, it's, it's out there in all good, good bookstores and quite a few bad ones. Uh, we're doing OK. Um, every time you buy one, I make some money, so... <laughs> Happy days. Uh, we also want to say hello to David, who's our agent, don't yeah. we? He's a legend. Yeah, we have the same agent, David Hahn, who looks after us very well. He also... He says, I have no trouble at all. Ah, uh, that's where you're going wrong, then. <laughs> yeah. you know, and he looks after Anne and Sean, and yeah. he, uh, he helped get Anne her own quiz show a few years back, so Sean and me are going, when's ours, mate? But he does look after us extremely well. He does. We and love every, every time he wanders into the producer's office on the chase, you see their faces fall and they go, what's he going to ask for now? <laughs> really? <laughs> we love you, David. And also, what's coming up next? Just in general, uh, in the life of the beast. I'm filming the chase at the moment. Uh, I've got a theatre tour of Wales in the West oh, in April, May, which is basically like the, the nights I do. So we're going around theatres. Uh, we've got some really good tech, so basically anyone can take me on in a reasonably high-tech quiz. We, you can either use your own phone or we've got keypads, and it's 50 or so multiple-choice questions. At the end of it, we find, oh, I win. Uh, but this, you know, when I sign a few books and generally tell interesting anecdotes, like the whole Fanny Smeller anecdote, unlike Bradley in that respect, we just dine out off on it for years to come. Where were we when the answer was Fanny Smeller? I need to see that bit on YouTube. And also, I'm going to come to a pop quiz with you. Game on. It's a... an easy one. Easy level. Well, I'd, we'll have to find one round there, yeah. etc. cetera. Um, it's... Well, they'll probably be very happy to see us. I mean, it might be the thing, if you don't mind, there might be times you find, where is it? Oh, he's doing photos again. Oh. And you've got to add something. You, you know, we'll be, we'll be a good team, I suspect. <laughs> 
But the secret, the secret of winning a pub quiz is, is not to worry about winning. Just relax and answer oh, questions. Oh, well, that's what I'm going wrong, because I'm very competitive. I like to win. You could have fooled me. <laughs> well, Mark, this has been wonderful to hear your song choices. Uh, we're going to play out Snow Patrol now, Chasing Cars. Yes, it helped me. One of your faves. Yes, it helped me for a rough time when I had a, a relationship that didn't end well, etc. And that was the song I played for rather. I was probably very miserable. But, oh, we uh, like ended it on a depressive note now. No, Sorry but it's that. such a wonderful song. It's, uh, a, you know, and it, uh, it cheers you up at the end. OK. Yeah, we'll put a little spin on it. It's Mark the, Be the Beast, everyone. Huge thank you to the Beast from the Chase. What a great show. Uh, honestly, just brilliant. And thank you to you at home for supporting the show. It is so appreciated. Thank you. Now, I will see you same time, same place next week. Stay safe. I'm Hayley Palmer, and I'll see you then. We'll do it all.